Welcome to my side of the mountain. It's Christmas here and you're here because you want to know how to make those adorable Christmas skirts for your little girls using these flannel fat quarter bundles. Let's get started. Hello, we're back to work on the adorable Christmas little girls Christmas skirts made out of flannel and these were uh, part of a fabric um, of a fat quarter fabric bundle and they're flannel and they just were a perfect print five of them and you need two matching prints to make one skirt so you will need two bundles two bundles to make five skirts and you can make those five skirts in no time at all now let's get started you need to wash all your fabric but before you wash you need to run a zigzag stitch all the way around each piece and then wash you might be brave and not wash uh, not um, Put a zigzag stitch up there but you will have a tangled mess when they come out of the washer so you wash them dry them so they will shrink they are 100 percent cotton they will shrink so you really need to wash these pieces of fabric then you match up your two prints i will be showing all of the prints within this video at different times and different portions <clears throat> so this print is the first one we're working with and i wanted to pull this one out and point out to you that there is a direction to the prints or the motifs that is on this fabric. Some of the motifs are tossed, which means it doesn't matter which direction the fabric, uh, which direction you put the fabric. But this one, you're going to want Santas and mittens and snowmans going up and down. So I've done that. I have matched those two pieces together. And you'll want to take all of your matches to the sewing machine and sew them together with a 3 8 inch stitch just a straight stitch 3 8 inch and then you're going to want to put a zigzag right along that it edge it encloses both pieces and it makes it very easy when you're working on these next steps you're going to want to again sew them along one side of the 18 inch side the long side remains unsewn this short side is where you sew then another zigzag stitch to um, finish off this edge now I like to start with a clean edge at the top and at the bottom and I <coughs> need to make a mark now you if you're um, a rotary cutter rotary cutter efficient aficionado you don't need to do this step you can just use your handy dandy large clear ruler and use your rotary cutter and your cutting mat and just go at it but for those of you that don't have it and are beginning sewers I'm going to show you an easy way you need a well you don't have to have a clear marker but it's easier if you have a clear uh, ruler and I find a very dark line on this clear ruler don't know what's on my ruler there anyway find a very dark line and then I line it up make sure that dark line is lined up on this edge on this straight edge so it's straight it's a little bit of catty cornered and I want to get rid of this very top edge so as long as that is straight and I'm up at the top edge I'm just going to use an old-fashioned pencil because it's white and make a mark which I have already done actually I don't know if you can see that there's a mark right there now I'm making a four toddler to five toddler so I will put I will use this mark and I will turn this so that 16 and a half inches is what I need for a four toddler five toddler and then I'll go down to the opposite end and make a mark and I don't know if you can tell there's I've already made the mark there so let me cut this out with some scissors now these scissors I get them from Walmart they're called razor edge scissors I like them personally I think they are good scissors and I think you won't make a mistake if you purchase these razor edge scissors I don't know if they still have them on hand but I've bought them at Walmart and I have actually gotten them at Joann's as well see I'm just getting getting that little rough edge off there you may want to go deeper and that's that's pretty straight you may want to go deeper if you don't have uh, if you're not going to be using the full length of the fabric you might want to go 
deeper in to make your straight edge, but I wanted to make sure I had a, a good cut here. Grab that so it doesn't cant on me. There we go. Now we have two nice clean edges. We have opened up this piece of fabric that we have two clean edges on and a clean edge at the top, a clean edge at the bottom, and we've opened it up and we need to put a zigzag stitch at the top and at the bottom, but we need to decide which direction we want this seam to go. Do we want it, the seam to go to the left or to the right? It really doesn't matter. What does matter is when you put the zigzag stitch up along the edge that you push, if you're going to the right, you push that seam down to go along the other edge. Then when you come back to do, then when you come back to do the stitch along this edge, make sure that you grab that and tuck it back in so that it is going all the same direction. That way when you iron it, it lays nice and neat and flat and you don't have this top going, you don't have the top going this direction and this going the other direction and then in the middle there's going to be a little bit of a bump. If you want a nice, if, if it doesn't work out that way, don't be devastated. Life will go on. Just the seam will be fine. Everything will be good. But you put the zigzag tips at the top on both and decide which direction you want this to go. Let's look at the next piece. This next piece is the candy, is the candy pink candy cane, not candy cane, pink peppermint twit. Uh, candy and just snowflakes. It's so pretty. I like this. All right, so you can see now that I have zigzagged all along this edge and I decided that the seam would go to the left. And the seam is at the left down here. There's a zigzag on both the top and the bottom. Then I took it to the ironing board and I ironed it and it made a very nice seam. Just makes a really nice seam. Now this next step might surprise some of you. A lot of folks would tell you, go ahead, or a lot of um, garment makers would tell you, go ahead and sew this seam and then iron up your case, iron down your casing and iron up your hem. Here's what I like to do. It's easier. It's a prepper. It's, it will prepare the fabric to create less work for you. I go ahead, after I have ironed this seam down to one side, I iron down the casing using a steam iron. I iron down the casing an inch and a half. If you are uh, doing 12 months through five toddler, an inch and a quarter if it's newborn through nine month. It's a three quarters of an inch of elastic for 12 months through five toddler. It is a half inch of elastic for newborn through nine month. So iron down your casing and then iron up your hem. Go ahead and iron those up. Give them a good steam. Now if this opens up in a minute, it's not going to be a big deal. You don't have to worry about keeping it all in place. This is just a great way to mark it and make it easier to iron back up. All you have to do is just barely tap it with an iron. But the hem on the 12 month to five toddler is anywhere from one and three quarters to two inches on the hem. You decide, it's up to you. If you have a tall young lady, you may want a longer hem. You could even do a hem as much as an inch, but I wouldn't go any shorter than that. Flannel tends to ripple and uh, it will lay better if it has a bigger hem, but don't be devastated if you don't have enough room for a bigger hem. All right, so we're ready to move on to sewing that side seam. And all you have to do is open up, just ignore, ignore those casings and hems that you um, ironed up and take a 3 8 inch seam and then finish it with a zigzag. And I've got another piece to show you. 
So I have that second seam is finished. It's been zigzagged. It's been ironed down to one side. And then when I went to the iron to iron it to one side, all I had to do was fold that hem back in place. Fold that. Let me turn it around so that it's the hem on the bottom. The casing in place and the hem back in place. And I have the tube that I need so that I can make the stitching for the casings and the hem. Now the hem is a top stitch. The casing is a stop, top stitch also. Let me show you. So the hem. I always start at a seam. And here's how I um, judge the hem, how I judge where I'm going to put my stitches. I like to run a second row of stitching. I like to run a second row of stitching. Uh, most all fabrics, when you wash them, if you only have one line of stitching, then this all curls up in bunches. But if you put that second row of stitching in there, this hem will stay so much neater. So here's how I do this. I use my fingernail and I can feel where that seam has started. I can feel it and it's about half a fingernail, half the length of my fingernail. I will put my first line, I will start my first line of stitching half a fingernail down. See? Half a, see, half a fingernail down from this edge and I can feel it from this side. So that's where I start my stitching. And then I use a mark. I like to use scotch tape if I'm afraid I don't have a marker on my sewing machine. I'll put a piece of scotch tape on the arm of my machine and I'll just use that as a guide. Scotch tape's cheap. You can take it on, take it off, put it on, put it off. You can use it as much as you want. I'll use that as a guide to make a straight stitch all the way around. There's the one seam all the way around. And then I move over three eighths of an inch. I move back over. Let me get this in the screen. I move back over three eighths of an inch and just make another row of top stitching. On my machine, a row of tops, a top stitch is anywhere from three to three point five. A four is a basting stitch. So you can use that to judge with your machine. But the top stitch is for appearance sake, but it's also a very dutiful stitch. Now the casing. Now the casing I owe oh, and I always do my top stitch on my hem from the front of the fabric. I will that gives you a it just gives a better look at least with my machine it does. But now when I'm sewing the casing into place I just sew from this side. I want my stitches to run into that zigzag I feel like that gives it a stronger, um, a stronger bond and doesn't, you know, I have had casings where the fabric we was loose. If I got too close to the edge, the, the fabric would fray and come apart. So this, I feel like if you stay along that zigzag stitch, that's a good guide for you. And see, I'm not perfect. I do it pretty quick. It's a good guide and it, um, it stabilizes everything. So. Let's go back. I start right here at the seam. I start at the seam and I stitch all the way around but leave approximately two to three inches. Doesn't really matter but you need an opening right here. But this is an important step. I truly believe this this has saved my bacon a few times. Elastic tends to roll sometimes in the seam but if you go through and you put an, a line of stitching right on that fold, I mean as close to the fold as you can, that makes everything neat. And then if that um, elastic does roll on you, and it will, it's not that big of a deal. You can grab hold of that little area and just wiggle and jiggle and get things back in place. So now we need to add the elastic. All right, we're getting close to being finished with this skirt. So we need a piece of elastic. I have the elastic that I have cut for the skirt that I'm making and I put a safety pin at both ends. There's a really good reason for that. Uh, you can use a bodkin if you want but I like this method. It's you know I always have safety pins on hand. 
So, but the, but the end that I'm going to feed into the casing, I cut the corners off. I just cut those corners off. Those corners get caught on everything under the, get, get caught on everything. And so I think it is so much easier if you cut the corners off. So let's start feeding this into the casing and I'll get it started. Now, don't forget, I have the safety pin on the other end and I get it started. And then as the elastic starts getting shorter, I don't want it to accidentally get pulled into the casing. You know, how you've been pulling and stretching and then all of a sudden you give it a jerk and the whole thing pulls. I take this safety pin and I pin it. Now I can just really go to town and not have to worry. I can just do this as quick as I can and the reason why I like the 3 8 inch seam right here is because your your safety pin or your bod, bodkin won't get stuck on that. Um, now with the newborn skirts and the littler skirts uh, there will be a lot more bunching this bu there will be a lot more of this bunching in the waistband area. So it's really important that you um, fix that elastic end. Uh, it's really important that you pin that elastic end in there. See, now I'm getting a little bit of, of uh, resistance, so I need to push it on in there. Oh, I'm getting close. All right. Getting close. There we go. I can grab that safety pin. All right, now I don't worry about distributing the fabric over the elastic just yet. But right now I have these two pieces. I have one. I have one that is pinned. I'm going to go ahead and unpin it at this point. There we go. I'll pin it back because I'm going to need to jerk on this a little bit. I'm going to hold on to this with this hand. I'm going to pull this just a little bit. I want to pull it out. Now I'm going to hold on to this one and I'm going to pull this one. All right. Now I can unpin. Now I have two good sized portions. I can unpin these, take the pins off of these. And I'm going to overlap them just about this much. Not a whole lot, but I'm going to take it to my sewing machine. I'm going to set a wide zigzag with a short stitch length. And I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and then go back and forth, back and forth using my backwards and forward button two or three times. Now let me tell you, with this elastic, there are different types of elastic, but with this type of elastic, you might have a piece of elastic come up and it might catch in your machine. At least it does with mine. Don't worry, just try to keep going forward. Don't break your machine. Um, sometimes grabbing hold of the flywheel on your machine and working it forward or working it backward or just stopping. If you have enough stitches on this, just stop. I'll show you what I've done on this other skirt. So here is the little snowman skirt that I have put um, the stitching in. And I'm going to try to get it. Let's see if we can focus it here. Come on, phone, focus for me. Do you see the little bump right there? That's a piece of elastic that bobbled up. But this is a really good fix. It's a really good secure fix. So now I can pull. Push that up in there. Now I'm not going to want to distribute my elastic yet. I want to, I want this area to stay as flat as possible. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew it down. I'll be back in a sec. And we are back, but before we go any farther, would you hit 
that like and subscribe button and subscribe to my channel if you like this tutorial so far and I hope you'll do that. That will help me out. That will help me bring more things to you. And just a reminder that all of the written instructions and measurements are at chrissysoverthemountaincrochet.com and I will put the links below for you. So we have finished this area up. I sewed the hole up. I just ran a stitch and it's all sewed up. Now I have to and need to redistribute the fabric across the elastic and that's pretty easy you just start jerking start pulling and jerking and jerking and stretching and stretching so I want to line up my two side seams so I've got the one side seam and here I have the other side seam and it's a little bit uneven looks like I have more um, more of the fabric on the front than I do the back so I'm going to move some of this fabric here we go let's try to get these two spots even all right now am I even I'm going to do it again there's my side seam there's my other side seam how am I looking ah oh, it's looking pretty good I'm going to give it a couple more stretches looking pretty good now the next step is ironing you can leave this skirt as is you can iron let it stay full and ironed or you may want to put faux pleats in this skirt there's instruction and photos on the website about faux pleats but here's how I do the faux pleats I grab the waistband first I first I kind of push it all together and I grab the waistband at the side and I start pulling and folding this one isn't as easy because there isn't as much fullness I start pulling and folding and I kind of finger press all that in place now I've got to the middle there we go that's looking better make sure I don't have the top there we go you just mess with it until you get pleats the way you want you work across there I think that looks pretty good and it's all rectangular there's no flare to it straighten it up now I grab the hem and I easily turn and I turn it over whoop there's an extra piece of thread and I look this over in the back and the back looks good so then I flip it back over and I pr steam press it with the iron I steam press it with the iron and I'll be back in just a second okay I'm back from the ironing board and while I was there I fussed with it a little bit more but you can see that it's been ironed and the pleats are all in there really hot iron just steam the dickens out of that just make it and let it cool down and this is the back the back does not look as neat as the front um, but the front is really pleated and then after it cools down you can just take it and open it up and look at what a cute 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 faux pleated little skirt this makes now with a flannel this was one of the larger skirts with a flannel it um, <clears throat> you're not going to have as much fabric to make pleats with if you were to um, use a cotton polyester fabric and add more width to your skirt you would have more more pleats they'd be more pronounced it would be so much easier but this is still just as cute as can be and so the next treatment is add a pull tie bow to the waistband isn't that adorable that is just so cute now let me tell you how easy this it this may take a little bit of sewing experience you know I've been sewing for several years I found the attaching the bow to the waistband was easy but here's how I did this 
I took a straight pin. I made sure I, the bow was where I wanted, the center of the bow was where I wanted it. Then I, then I pushed that bow end over a little. I'm going to want this area to be hooved up. And then I pinned it in place. Now, put the bow back where I, bow center. Did you see that? I pushed the bow center, the bow knot, the center, where, back over here where I wanted it. And then I push this over a little. Can you see that? I push that over a little. I'll bring it up close here in a minute. I push that over and pin that in place. All right, it's pinned in place, and it looks all distorted. It looks a little funny and wonky, but there's a, a good-sized space underneath the knot because you're going to want the elastic. You want the elastic to be able to stretch and not distort the bow ends. So you take this to the sewing machine, you use a top stitch, and you just stitch right along there. It is very easy. And then stitch right along there, then you will take, <clears throat> make sure your bow knot is in the very center, right here, push it into the center. Then you will take and lift up right here, lift up right there your bow and put a bar tack right there on each tail. That keeps it from coming untied and that keeps that bow in the position that you want it in. Keeps the, keeps the tails in the position you want it in. So this is a skirt that has the bow sewn down. See? It's really an easy treatment. You just sew right along there with a top stitch on both sides. And notice there's that extra there. But then you take the tails, you put them in the position that you want them. Make sure they're in the position you want them. And then lift up the bow and right underneath that bow you put a bar tack. Can you see that? You put a bar tack, both sides. Then here's the trick, because that bow can still look just a little bit off, because you've got that extra space. Take it to the ironing board, put your bow knot where you want it, and then push those bow ends over. Make sure that they are pushed over. They might even go over top of the stitching. Get your tails in place the way you want them. Fuss with your tails. Then lay a pressing cloth on top of it. Move your fingers and hit that with an iron. And that will <clears throat> give you a very finished look for your bow. Isn't that a nice treatment? Let me show you the bow that's been pinned. <clears throat> Let me repeat that step for you. Here's the bow that I just pinned on, that I just pinned. I will stitch here, stitch there, move my tails, stitch there, stitch there, then move my bow knot to the center, push these ends over top of the stitching, and then put a pressing cloth over it and hit it with an iron, and that way it won't look wonky. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm going to do a pull tie. If you And if you like these pull tie bows, they are just cute as buttons, aren't they? I'm going to do a video on how to make those quick and easy. And if you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'd love to bring more to you. I will have links in the, um, in the, I will have links below. And I hope to see you on my side of the mountain again soon. Bye.